You know, some people might say it's ridiculous for me to get so excited about a video editor update. But you know what? I am excited about this video editor update. I'm going to try and show you why if you just if you could just open your mind for two seconds. Hi, welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI. I like video editing. I don't like editing as a profession, but I like it as a creative task. My background was in broadcasting. I started my whole creative journey with audio editing. And then when digital video editing became a thing, oh baby, was I on that. And so any tool that makes that easier I like that tool. And I've been using various video editors over the years, the high-end ones. And the last one I used, started doing a subscription model. And I was like, well, okay, because I've been using you for so long. But as I discussed in my last video about Filmora, there are certain tasks in the AI media creation process that I found myself doing over and over that were video related or needed driving video to make it work. And it was just too cumbersome to use the big professional tool because it took too much time and too much effort to do a simple thing that Filmora can do in a couple of clicks and do it really well. And then I just found more and more things like that with Filmora and eventually I just stopped my subscription to the other thing and I'm all in on this. And the other thing I love about Filmora is they're constantly updating it with really great pro level features. And that's what I'm here to show you today. I'm gonna to show you updates that are mostly AI related. Some of the updates I touched on in my last video and some of them maybe aren't that recent. But if you've never seen Filmora before, I wanna show you what this thing can do because it's a editor to be taken seriously because you can purchase it with a lifetime license and you don't have to do subscriptions. Now, full transparency, just like a lot of these other services, if you want access to stock media, stock audio, and things like that that are updated by third parties, there's a subscription to that. But if you're a serious professional in this space anyway, you're going to have some subscription somewhere. So you can continue to use that subscription or see what kind of assets you can get through Filmora and maybe go that way. That's what I did. I love having everything I need all right here. And you're going to find that even if the stock media libraries that you're subscribing to don't have what you're looking for, these built-in AI tools are getting better and better at giving you that content. Let's just get into it. When you first launch Filmora, you see this, but what I'm going to do is point to the toolbox and just give you an idea of the kind of tools they've got here. Many of these tools are available from other parties as standalone products that you would pay for either on a subscription basis or one time. And they are built in here and you're not losing any quality. These are all good tools. So smart short clips I'm gonna be showing you today. They've got a video enhancer, a really cool AI color palette matching tool that I'm gonna show you. One of them that I'm really excited about is it generates background music based on the content of the video. Auto reframe, planar tracking I'll show you. It handles multi-camera editing. Portrait cutouts I showed you in the last video. AI translation I'm gonna show you today object removal, voice cloning, music generation, screen recorder, AI image generation, just a ton of pro level tools and they're all accessible here in one interface. And for me, you just cannot beat that kind of convenience. And that's why this program is running almost all the time on my computer. Let me start by showing you the short smart clips, which basically takes a long piece of content and shops it up into little ones for social media, shorts, reels, things like that. If that's not your thing, bear with me. We got plenty of other tools to show you. I'm gonna show you two quick examples of how I might use it and maybe you can apply it to one of your creative use cases. So let me just click Smart Short Clips right here. When you do this interface comes up, I drag the video file of this video I posted on YouTube, your voice in text-to-speech with chat TTS, where we talked about that software, drag that in here and just click Go. And once it did that, it automatically generated all of these shorter variations on this longer video that could potentially be used for shorts or reels or other short form content. Not only will it give you these variations, but it will also score them a nine out of 10, an 8.7 out of 10, an 8.7 out of 10, 8.6, all based on what it perceives as probably relevant and usable. It'll show you the transcript of what it created. And let's just look at it real quick. And that seems completely appropriate. So let's listen to this. If you subscribe now, I will not follow you. I will not pursue you, but if you do not, I will follow you. Okay, so there's a clip that I might be able to use, and of course, we have the ability to edit, which I'm gonna show you, but I just wanna give you a couple of other examples of the kinds of things it can extract. Just like a lot of AI tools, they create source material. An AI-generated video may be 80% usable and 20% not. Well, that's what editing's for. You don't throw out the whole thing just because 20% of it isn't perfect. I'm getting philosophical there. You might also notice the AI speech enhancement. Let's you get this play and turn this on. Like if you're filming an action movie or if you're doing a voiceover in a booth, you do multiple takes and you take the best of each. It was a part but the music in the background, it doesn't really do well. And I've already got a professional setup. I don't really need <coughs> AI <coughs> enhancement. But if you're dealing with noisy video or something like that, you can utilize that. 
But let's say we want to make some changes. We just click on edit and it's going to load up the editor and do all the cutting for you. Put everything where it's supposed to go. So if you just want to move where the captions are or change some of the text, add stickers, move things around, add other effects, you have it all right here, access to it all. And then you just click export and you actually have the ability to send it straight to YouTube, Vimeo, or TikTok. For me, I just save it locally. I want to try it now with a different kind of video. I'm going to click Smart Short Clips again, and I'm going to add this video. All it is is a bunch of talking heads that I created with Hedra, the animation software, and me changing my voice in Eleven Labs to do the character acting. They're just strung together. There's no production with them. There's nothing. So it'll be interesting to see what it does with this. It can automatically choose the length. I can say, no, I just want it to be zero and, or 30 and 60. You also have a choice of visual themes, video podcasts, gaming and sports, marketing, educational videos. I think in this case, I'll just choose educational videos, though this is not at all educational, just to see what happens. I'll go 30 to 60 seconds. I'll select English as the language and click on generate. Depending on the length of your video, this could take a little bit of time. Like the example I showed you before, that was a full YouTube video. It could have been 20 minutes or something. So it took a while for it to cut it down. This one seems to be going a little faster, but you don't have to sit around and wait for it. I got the notification that our job is done. Let's check it out. We'll just go back to the main menu, click on smart short clips, newly generated because it was a much shorter video. It gave us three to choose from. Let's see what happens here. I'm not going to lie to you as much as I'd like to. Gentlemen, I don't like to use colloquialisms normally, except in dire circumstances like this, or when someone is irritating me mildly on public transportation. I want you to sit down right there in that chair. I'm not here to cause any trouble. I hope you understand that, but I won't have you come in here into my office and push around my employees and talk to them in such a manner. So it shows two of those things there. Let me just peek at this one. Yeah, hi, I couldn't help but notice you were looking over in my direction, and I'm going to have to ask you to stop doing that. It's just one of those crazy things. I just can't handle being looked at by people who look like you. So it extracted that one by itself. Sometimes I just sit and pick the flowers and throw them one by one into the lake, kind of like the little girl in Frankenstein. And then... A big monster made of dead people joins me and throws a few flowers in and then throws me in as well. And then I die. I already know I'm in the right place. I followed a map given to me by my... What is his name? He's a neighbor of mine. So it did a great job of just isolating those. They need to be produced up a little bit. Let's add some music. So for example, if I just wanted to do this one, I would click on edit just like before, bring it in and it's ready to add whatever I want to. Now, because I have this opportunity right now, I'd be foolish not to talk about the AI background music generator. It is accessible from that main menu, but it's also accessible from your project at any time by just clicking this little icon right here. And what it's gonna do is it's going to automatically comprehend the content on the current timeline and generate suitable music for it. So this is that girl just basically telling people not to look at her. So I wonder what AI will come up with for the music. Let's find out. We're going to click that right there and click on start. It's analyzing the video content. The smart background music generation is in progress. Now the volume may default to be a little loud. Let's see. Hi, I couldn't help but notice. It is. Let's just use their audio ducking feature, which actually works really well. I'm going to select all of her audio up here. Click on audio. Scroll down to audio ducking and click that switch and you'll see that the volume of the music just automatically adjusted. That means we should be able to hear her much better. Let's listen. Notice you were looking over in my direction and I'm going to have to ask you to stop doing that. It's just one of those crazy things. I just can't handle being looked at by people who look like you. And I don't mean them in any particular way, except that you give me the creeps, the heebie-jeebies, the willies, all of those things. You give them to me. I didn't ask for them. So if you could just turn around and look the other way, I won't have to call my dad. Okay, I love that. It timed out right. I think it fit what she was saying just fine. I mean, I don't know what you were expecting, but that works for me. It's not offensive. Let's import another video that has maybe a distinctly different tone to it. I'm gonna load this project that just has a bunch of files in it. Let's drag this guy down here. He was being ominous to this person. So let's click on the background music generator for this and see what it comes up with with his intimidating talk. All right, it's generated. Let me click on this and turn on the audio ducking and give it a listen. I already know I'm in the right place. Okay, that's kind of a miss. 
I really want it to be a little bit more ominous. Maybe asking it to do something so clearly emotionally driven is a stretch. But honestly, this is the first time I've said that's a real big miss for the things that I've given it. But I haven't really thrown that kind of moody stuff at it before. But never fear. You have many options. You can delete that little music track. Of course, I have access to all the stock music. I could just type ominous, intense, and probably find something very easily. That's too much. Right, so I could download that. Drag that on the timeline. I already know I'm in the right place. I've followed a map given to me by my... What is his name? He's a neighbor of mine. Anyway, much better, but of course that's professional music. But what if you just want to come up with something all your own? Within Filmora, by clicking the AI Music tab here, and really all we do is tell it the mood or the theme or the genre we want. So let's say the mood we want is fear. Okay, that's it, fear. I could add another one, fear and horror. The genre would be ambient. Under settings, I can adjust the length. So right now it's set for a minute 30, which is a little long. I only need 30 seconds. I'm going to drag that down to about 30 here. And it can generate up to six different options for me. I will keep it at three for now. Click on generate. Let's listen to what we got. No. How about this? It's a little better. I'm going to take away all of these, and I'm just going to say fear. There we go, that's much better. It's not super scary, but we're going in the right direction. A little bit too rhythmic -y. So clearly the AI-generated music has sort of a poppy bias to it. Let's talk about AI translation real quick. It's one thing to translate subtitles or to even do a voice clone on top of a talking mouth. But when you can coordinate lip sync with the language and a voice clone, now you've got something. So let's look at this. Here's just me doing the source video for the closing of all of our videos. Before any face swap, before any voice cloning, before anything. It's just me. Sounds like this. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. Okay, I guess the voice cloning was done. I'm not that good of an impressionist. So let's do some fun translation. I'm just going to right mouse click on this, and I'm going to click on AI translation. It's going to say translate voice and caption. Sure, that's what I want. Source language, English, that's right. And we could go Italian, we could go Spanish, we could go all of these things. How about today we go Dutch? Here's the kicker. Lip sync. It is in beta, but let's give it a shot. And I click on translate. I hereby confirm that I possess all necessary rights and permissions to upload videos. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. This is an AI process, so you got to give a little time to do its magic. All right, she's done. Let's take a listen. Als u nu abonneert, zal ik u niet zoeken. Ik zal u niet vervolgen. Maar als je niet doet, zal ik u zoeken. Ik zal je vinden en ik zal. That's pretty solid. The lip movement does not suck. The voice clone is on. And that's all within Filmora. Quick things just because I think they're cool, and then I'm going to wrap it up with a request that I got from a comment. I did touch on this in that last video where I covered some of the more recent updates, but I just want you to see it again if you haven't. Every now and then you've got two clips that were taken at different times of day, different lighting situations, but they're supposed to be taking place maybe in the same environment or at least maintain the general look and feel and color palette of the film overall. AI Color Palette allows you to transfer the color palette, if you will, from one piece of video to another. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take two distinctly different color palettes. We'll take this sort of pink thing and then this earth tone thing here. Let's say I want to try and bring some of this brightness or at least the tone or the general feel of this first clip to this second one. So the second one is the one I want to change. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to click the little artist palette here. And now all I need to do is scroll through the video. It can be the entire timeline and choose the frame that I want to use as a reference for the color over here. So this is the one I've chosen. I'm gonna click on generate and you'll see that it didn't change your clothes pink or anything like that. It just changed the overall hue so that now these two pieces of video can live more in the same world. Let's do another example. We'll take this one here. We'll select it, we'll choose the color palette again, we'll scroll over to this guy, we'll click on generate, and you can see it. all it really did here was just add a little coolness to his skin tone. Nothing really crazy. But let's say you don't want the skin tone change when you change the tone of the rest of the image, which is perfectly logical and can happen sometimes. Well, right over here, there is a protect skin tone slider. So you can decide how much the skin tone is protected. 
So as I slide back and forth here, you can see that his original skin tone comes back if you look under here in the preview. So then just the rest of the image is affected a little bit by what's going on here. Let's take this one, another colorful image. This time, let's see if we can modify this one. So we're gonna select it. We'll choose the artist palette here. We'll scroll to this more yellowy feel here and click on generate. And you can see his skin did change a little bit too much probably. So again, we just wanna protect those skin tones, bring it down a little bit. We don't wanna bring it down all the way because then we kind of lose any impact of this change. But maybe like about here. In reality, you're probably gonna be using this feature with clips that are already pretty close and just need some fine tuning. Let's take this one here and this one here. They both have sort of the warm glow, but they're still a little different. Let's just choose her, we'll choose the artist palette, We'll scroll down to him. We'll click on generate. It just adjusted the colors a little bit to match the richness of the first one. The other one I think is just cool because it's so easy to do. And back in the day, I used to think that something like this was so advanced and would require such advanced hardware. And it's just called planar tracking. And I'm gonna click that. They have their own little example that they load right up. They walk through exactly how to use it here. But let's say we wanted to put a video on the side of this truck. The truck is on the timeline. All we need to do is click either advanced or auto planar tracking. If I click on auto, a square appears here and I wanna move it around, adjust the corners so that they line up with where I'd like the video to be. So once you've defined that, you start the tracker. Just takes a few seconds, it's a super short clip. You can see it's doing a reasonable job of adhering to the rectangle on the side of the truck, though it does start to get a little wonky here. So now we just wanna choose what's going to go into this little square. We can do that just by clicking under here where it says link element, where it currently says none, and we can say import from computer, choose a video file, and it is just there. Now we're seeing this outline here because we've got this little eye on. If we don't wanna see that, we turn off the eye and then we can click play and watch the tracking. I'm not going to lie to you as much as I'd like to. So now let's clear that tracker and start over with the advanced to see the difference. Now we have the accuracy level that we can choose between low, default, and high. I don't know why we would ever choose anything other than high. We do the same action here. We line up the dots along with the plane where we want this to be superimposed. And just like before, we're gonna click the play button for analyze. The difference here is we can actually also analyze frame by frame by frame here and make adjustments as we go along if we see that it is messing up. Right now, it's doing a pretty good job of sticking to the corners. I'm just gonna let it continue. Right, we're here at the last frame. I'm gonna slide this a little to other places where it's off move it over. Going to line it up in a couple of places here. Now we have a much better track on that rectangle. But now again, let's just import from computer. Let's turn off those outlines and go. So it's a little jittery, but we have the ability to go to exactly the frame where it's wonky and fix it. Finally, I'm going to answer a viewer request. We did go over this on one of the earlier videos, but I'm gonna show you how to do split screen in here because it's so freaking easy. We just use templates here, and I'm going to go under split screen. I'm gonna choose this basic one here with two video slots, drag it down to the timeline, move my cursor over there, and now I can just go back to my media tab and drag the videos that I want in each of these. I can make any adjustments if I want to, like on the scale, to make this line up a little bit more. Because these both have the same audio track, I'm going to mute the audio track on this one. We'll stress this out to allow for the length of the video there. I understand that you feel entitled to everything here on this table. You feel you put in the effort, you put in the work, you, you feel you paid your dues. Well, let me tell you something, mister. You haven't paid a due. Not one do. You are do-less. You don't even know what a do is. I don't want to hear you use the word do again. Understood? I do. So I'm a fan. I use it all the time. And I'm going to continue to tell you how cool it is, whether you like it or not, until you give it a shot and see for yourself that it is a real time saver and a workflow short cutter. And it helps you to take all of this great AI media that we're creating with all of the other technologies that we create on this channel and put them together in something that people will actually watch. If this is the type of thing you'd like to learn more about, well, then why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? Because these are the types of things we discuss all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...